Hi and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'll be showing you the steps of a complete restoration of my E30 rear arms. So include the disassembly, adding reinforcements, restoring of the parts and the reassembly. This is the penultimate episode of my rear assembly restoration project. I originally removed the assembly in one piece while prepping to get the car on the jig and uh, that's how I plan to reinstall it. As you can see it's in pretty bad shape. Uh, it's required a full restoration of every single component. And the first job was to get the uh, get the assembly down into subcomponents, and then we could make a start on the restorations. All these components that have been res restored so far are in my playlist, which should be shown now. In the next episode, I'll be putting the reassembly all back together. And if you're just looking for a specific part in this video, the timestamps will be below. So to get ready with the disassembly. Uh, I've already cut the dust shield off due to damage, uh, just to get a bit more access. The first thing we need to do is remove the hub. I had to hammer that out due to uh, struggling to kind of get it on the press. But then we can work with the bearing on the press nice and easy. With my press, I've got this pretty handy sleeve kit. What you can do is choose all the different sizes to make sure that you're putting the pressure at the right areas, and no chance of damage anything. I will put the link below. So with the arms cleaned up, I had to get them sandblasted uh, elsewhere due to not fitting in my cabinet. But they turned out great. I did leave them for a few weeks, so there's a slight bit of rust on there that needs to be sorted. As you can see here, this is the reinforcement kit that I've gone with. I will add the link below. There's a few little things you need to be careful with when using this, especially with a normal fuel tank. I'll show you what I did later and the reasons behind it. With these components being laser cut, they're not always going to be a perfect fit, especially on the cast body. So what I had to do is just kind of go through each part and contour them to suit. Uh, most didn't need too much, but to make sure this beam fits here, I had to take quite a bit off the, the inner edge uh, to keep it nice and straight. So now to prep for the welding, I'm going to use the weld through primer on the parts that are going to be installed and also in the area where they're going to be. When you're welding on here, 
you want to make sure you keep it nice and slow. Uh, if you run too long of beads, you, you have chance to warp the arms. So what I was aiming to do is keep moving around the moving around the part, welding different areas to keep the keep the temperature down. So here's the mod modification you need to do to allow clearance for the fuel tank filler. It's a nice quick and easy job to do, especially with it off the car. If you're unfortunate to leave it on, uh, you might struggle to fill the car up or wear through the hose. As always, I'll be using POR15 here. Uh, after prepping it, taping uh, all the mating surfaces up and blocking off all the holes, you can just go for it. This is a brush on application. Uh, it takes a pretty long while to dry, but I do prefer it to powder coat. It's a much more resistant material, much le less likely to crack. Okay, so we've both the arms ready to go. Now we can work on the reassembly. Uh, they've turned out really good, really happy with the finish of them. And now we've got all the new parts to carry on with the rest of the install.
Now with reinstall on the hub, I thought I'd get away with using uh, this setup, however it was a bit too stiff. Uh, but one thing to take into consideration is that the rear of the bearing, the inner race of the rear bearing needs supporting when you're pulling through the hub. As you can see here, I've got the, uh, the piece resting on the rear of the race and then that will help pull everything through. Now here we have the both of the rear trailing arms all completely rest, restored with the reinforcement kit. I'm really happy with how this came out. I know a lot of it won't be seen, especially with like the zinc plated parts uh, shown here behind the handbrake, but I know they're there and that keeps me happy. I went with a poly bush as I've carried on with a full poly bush on the suspension, but I'm going to keep with the OEM on the drivetrain. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much.